Anyway, I get the, the lovely privilege um, to speak after you've heard quite a bit this morning already from Rob about EBM. So what does EBM mean for the challenge? Hopefully that's, do I get this working? So we've actually come up with, um, I think it's in our research book, uh, we do have the, one of these lovely infographics of, of not really a debated, but a very long discussion that we've had over the timing of the challenge on what does EBM mean for us? What does it mean for Aotearoa? And what we've come up with is our fancy words, a holistic and inclusive way to manage marine environments and the competing uses for and demands on and ways newly New Zealanders value them. Um, but basically, just going on from what Rob was speaking about in his video clip um, earlier this morning, it's really about managing that whole of the ocean for not just one particular economic use or many, but for that completely inclusive suite of both values that we people have, whether it's our sense of place values, whether it's um, new blue economies coming in, whether it's um, supporting tourism, but really that understanding that our oceans, our marine ecosystems are a social ecological system that our economics and our social values are very much dependent on the health of our ecosystems. Um, so a lot of you have probably seen a whole bunch of different terms about EBM uh, that have come out over the years. This is one of uh, the slides that we have from colleagues in the states at NOAA um, trying to explain that difference between, for example, at the bottom, that's our single species approach to fisheries management. That's something we could get away with um, 50 years ago when we might have a target fishery in one area, but not a lot of else, whether due to technology or um, just very abundant fisheries that we needed to manage. Um, and then there's been a bit more move toward that EAFM or the ecosystem approach to fisheries management. Well, what was that? Well, that was recognition that some fish are actually dependent on habitats, whether it's for juvenile nursery habitats um, or other aspects, um, but also dependent on the services that the coast may provide in filtering water, pollutants, sediments, nutrients. So in that whole combination, as well as those interactions with other species. So that was that ecosystem approach, but could still be a single species approach. And then that movement gradually to ecosystem-based fisheries management, which most people consider still a fisheries approach. And there are quite a lot of new tools that help us um, in this. And uh, there are a number that we'll have uh, discussed over the next couple days, as well as we have some sessions in the poster session on our decision, decision support tools, including Atlantis. But basically, multitudes of fisheries all being managed together, including their interactions, whether it's predator prey, their interactions with habitats, changes due to climate, etc. What is different about EBM is EBM is not just about fisheries, it's actually managing that whole range of potential uses and values and experiences in the ocean. So what we've done is then tried to take that down to, um, through some learnings early on in the challenge with one of our cross-program projects where we tasked a group of researchers to look at EBM and determine, well, are we currently already doing it? You know, and learning if we were already doing EBM meant thinking, well, what does EBM actually mean that we could actually compare both within legislature and institutional process and policy what we're actually doing in EBM and what we think this actually means in terms of those more, we called them principles. And so we ended up through quite a bit of discussion both within this cross-program project then with uh, the challenge leadership team and our board and our Kahui and others coming up with these seven principles. Going to go. And the first one shouldn't be surprising to everyone. I think that's what most people see as ecosystem-based management. Well, it's about the ecosystem, right? We need a sustainable ecosystem for the future. But also remembering, and again, as Rob said earlier this morning, the ecosystem and sustainability is actually something we need to have sustainable investment. So that sustainability is far more than just ecosystem. It's actually sustaining that whole social ecological system and its dependence on the marine environment. Uh, human activities, so again, it's not just about ecosystem. It's about that range of both social, cultural, uh, ecological, economic, all of those uses and values all together. Knowledge-based, well, EBM, it is based in evidence. So it's not just a bunch of hypothe 
hypothetical anecdotes, we actually use evidence, and it's from a number of knowledge systems. So it's not just our, if you want to call it Western science or more scientific principles, but also bringing in uh, other knowledges, Mataranga Māori, our community values and priorities, and that range of things go in to inform ecosystem-based management. Collaborative decision making, and I think I don't need to say much about this because the next talk by Richard will be talking about some of the work, the challenges done looking at participatory processes. But EBM is based on having that interaction. It's, in theory, not a top-down approach. It's involving uh, that multitude of values and coming up with, with what we all want to be going on in terms of uses of our marine environment and how we manage it. Co-governance. This one, we think we're actually quite unique in New Zealand. Um, most of the um, very long history, and I'm, I have quite a few dozen papers on what the rest of the world thinks EBM is, co-governance rarely comes up. But co-governance is quite uniquely New Zealand. Um, our governance structures, we need to provide for Treaty of Waitangi partnerships for Tikanga and Mataranga Māori, um, that those principles of Kaitiaki Tanga are really prevalent and quite uh, directly overlapping with what most people think EBM means. So it's that sustainability for future generations, our gardening, guardianship, um, all of those things come quite directly as part of what governance means, but that co-governance, co-development, um, and co-creation of what we all want for our future. Tailored. Uh, what we mean here is that it's place and time specific, and I, I'm thinking Richard will talk about this as well, but in analyzing participatory processes in New Zealand, um, everyone's hoping that there's a recipe. How do we do it right? And it's actually, it's not a recipe, but it's a collection of things that we apply to specific places, specific times. So if we're doing a resource management process on somewhere that has no aquacultural oil and gas interest in a location, you wouldn't have two spots reserved on a management committee for oil and gas and aquaculture. It's not quite that simple, but that's a you know, very simplistic example of you know, a tailored process, but also that our ecological systems are quite complex, and so we do have quite a bit of learning to go in learning about those connectedness, so a lot of the research that we'll be presenting over the next couple of days within the Dynamics Seas programs on ecosystem connectivity, cumulative effects, and multiple stressors are all very much something that we need to know how the system works in order to properly do EBM. And finally, it's adaptive. What we think might work today, we actually might get new information that results in us changing the way we want to manage or do decision making or different people, different industries might come on board. Um, a lot of the challenges looking on adding to the blue economy. So if we have new economic uses that we didn't know before and suddenly um, they're coming to the forefront, we need to have a system that allows us to incorporate them, look at their impacts, look at how they work both with values and across the other competing or um, overlapping industries. There we go. So um, that's the pretty little picture. If anybody wants to look at uh, these principles in more detail, it is in the research book. And we've also um, submitted a paper on these that, again, this is for us a discussion item. These are the principles that we've worked through over the last um, few years. And we are open to further discussion on how you th think these resonate with you. And this should be coming out in the next week or so, I believe, or a couple weeks. So thank you.